Good to see you again, Rabbi Alex. Uh, great to see you, Rabbi Nachum. Um, they tell us that a lot of people in America are watching this as well. And in America, they have what's called an MVP, a most valuable player. When a game is over, or a series is over, or a season, who is the greatest player? Who's the MVP, the most valuable player? When you read Miguel Atester, who's your MVP? Who's your hero? That's a really difficult question, because um, there are so many amazing characters in the Megillah. But if I had to choose... Not Harona. <laughs> <laughs> he gets an honorable mention. Harona <laughs> Zachor Latov. Um, but when we're looking at the Megillah, uh, of course it's called Megillah Esther. And Esther really is, I think, quite the, the fascinating character. Because, of course, uh, Esther begins the Megillah as a very passive character. Ein Esther, Mageret Moladeta, Vatila Kach Esther. The main thing she does is that she doesn't do right? <laughs> she is taken to the palace. She doesn't ask for anything when she spends the night with the king and she won't tell who she is. Then suddenly there is a complete character change. At the end, she goes in, she started giving the shots, telling Mordechai what to do. <laughs> Gather the Jews. She's the one who musters up the um, confidence in order to approach the king. She comes up with the whole plot. She doesn't follow Mordechai's instructions, does she? Uh, that she doesn't do. Mm -hmm. she doesn't, he asks her to plead, and right. in fact, she manipulates. And at the end, Chazal tell us that... Was she allowed to, make her own, was she allowed to have her own opinion? <laughs> <laughs> and at the end, well, she's the antithesis to the Vashti story. Uh -huh. And at the end of the story, she's the one that Chazal tell us, Kivuni Ledorot, Kitvuni Ledorot. She insists that Chazal establish this as a holiday. In other words, Esther moves from passive to active. Now here I want to reference uh, Rav Aaron Lichtenstein, Zichron Levracha. Oh, that's the famous Sicha, yeah. With the famous Sicha. We used to get together, it was Tani Tester, and Rav Lichtenstein would get up after Mincha and uh, give a Sicha. And I have to say that this uh, sermon, this Sicha, changed a lot of lives. I think that for me, uh, there are reasons why I'm in Jewish education. I think Rav Menachem is one of the reasons why I'm in Jewish education. But one of the things that really affected me was Rav Lichtenstein's uh, talk, because he goes back to the scene, he says, where is the tipping point, I think we call it in Malcolm Glandwell lang language, what's the tipping point for Esther? It is the words of Mordechai, and he says, Esther, don't think that you are going to escape uh, out of all the Jews in safety in the palace. Kim don't uh, because if you're silent at this moment, the Jews will be saved, but you will go down as a footnote in history. And here the question is, what is he saying to her that changes her? And here's something very interesting. He says, maybe I'll put it this way. Do you really think that you can, you're going to be safe in the palace and we're going to die? Are you really saying you're going to let us all die? She's vaccinated. <laughs> She's vaccinated? What he's saying is that it's not so much that she says, I can't go to the king. He says, it's not that you can't. It's that it's not important enough for you. You don't care enough. You think, as long as I'm safe, we're all okay. They can all, you know, go to oblivion. Because you personally are safe. But I want to tell you, we'll find a solution. The question is, who will you be? Rav Lichtenstein turned around to us in yeshiva every single year, and he said, there's a Jewish world who are assimilating. You're safe in the palace. You're in the Bet Midrash. But what about all the Jews who are intermarrying, the Jews who don't even know about their Jewish education? Are you going to get up and be somebody? Are you going to get up and do something? Are you going to be part of the drama of the Jewish people? And I know that for me, I took the personality of Esther, and I said, I want to take on that role. I want to be a player. I want to be somebody who actually will help to save the Jewish people, just like in ancient times. Now it's not about going to plead to the king. Now it's about going out there to spread the word of Torah, to educate Am Yisrael, and me and many, many tens, if not hundreds of other people like me, listen to Rav Lichtenstein's interpretation of Esther from passive to active, from feeling that she is a nobody to realizing she can play a role, and we took this on. Yeah. 
the same thing where people can spend their whole life complaining, he's no good, that's not good, or you can do something about it. Uh, I remember a story that was a, uh, actually it was a uh, Rabbella or Aldo Shalom, uh, when he was, in, he was complaining all the time about the opening, I said, okay, you're now in charge. <laughs> in other words, instead of complaining about things, and he became, you know, became a great rabbi, um, no, did great things, but the second you reach that tipping point, like you pointed, that instead of complaining about things, doing things about them, and rising to leadership, I think, uh, not, and not just, um, you know, religious leadership, I'll just add something Zionistic. Uh, I remember on Purim, I used to, you know, all the Zionistic lines on Purim. I used to say that Zionism is not a spectator sport, meaning, going back to American sports, meaning Zionism is not just something to appreciate and, you know, say rah, 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 but you get to play the game. In my older days, I said, you know, maybe we do need good spectators because good spectators, you know, make the team better. But if you can, if God's giving us this opportunity to return to our land and build up a state, so I can thank God for it, I can become a member and do something about it and take it to the next step. I think that's also a message we got from Rafael Blixenstein and from Rabbi Mital about um, how to recognize opportunity and not just see the hand of God in history, but enter that and do what we can to make it better. Purim Sameach.